So, how does a doctor learn how to heal patients through the perspective of low-carb nutrition and metabolic health? I'll tell you the truth. Conventional teaching doesn't always give us the full picture. That's why I learn on the Nutrition Network. They are my number one research when it comes to learning and teaching metabolic health. In fact, they have a brand new course on cardiovascular health launching right now. So if you're a clinician or just someone who wants to protect your own heart, check the link in the description. Now, speaking of cardiovascular health, let's talk about one of the most common and one of the scariest, heart rhythm problems, atrial fibrillation or AFib. AFib is an irregular heartbeat that starts in the upper chambers of the heart, the atria. Instead of beating in a steady rhythmic pattern, the atria quivers or spasms chaotically. That chaotic rhythm then travels down to the lower chambers, the ventricles, which can lead to a fast, irregular pulse. Some people describe it like their heart is fluttering out of control. Others don't feel it at all, but silently, it raises their risk of stroke, heart failure, and early death. In the US alone, over 6 million people have been diagnosed with AFib, and that number is expected to double by 2030. It's one of the leading causes of hospitalizations in older adults. And here's a dramatic statistic. Having AFib increases your risk of stroke by five times. It also doubles your risk of dying prematurely. Now, let's connect this to metabolic health. I remember when I was in my obesity medicine training, one statistic jumped out at me and never left my mind. If your BMI is normal, 25 or less, your AFib risk is fairly flat. But for every single point above 25, your risk of AFib goes up by about 4%. Think about that. A BMI of 30 means your risk isn't just 20% higher, it's dramatically elevated. That's why I often tell patients that AFib isn't just an electrical problem, it's a metabolic problem. I'll pin the studies to support this claim in the video comments. Why does this happen? Well, fat tissue isn't just an energy storage site. It's hormonally active. Visceral fat in particular drives systemic inflammation, insulin resistance, and structural changes in the heart. The atria become stretched and scarred. High insulin levels drive sympathetic nervous system activity. More adrenaline, more stress on the heart's electrical system. Add in sleep apnea, high blood pressure and diabetes, common companions of obesity, and you have the perfect storm for AFib. Here's a lesser known fact. People with insulin resistance are up to twice as likely to develop AFib, even if they don't yet have diabetes. And another one, when you lose just 10% of your body weight, you can cut AFib recurrence by almost half. Yes, half. That means that metabolic healing doesn't just reduce risk, it can actually stabilize or even put AFib into remission. But here's the reality. Most conventional approaches to AFib don't address root cause. Patients are put on anticoagulants to reduce stroke risk, antiarrhythmic drugs to control rhythm, or procedures like ablation to burn away misfiring heart tissue. Those can help in the short term. But without fixing the metabolic drivers, AFib often comes back. It's like bailing water out of a sinking boat without plugging the leak. So what's the plug? Metabolic health. And here's where a low-carb ketogenic or carnivore approach shines. By lowering insulin, reducing visceral fat, and calming systemic inflammation, we change the environment inside the body that makes AFib thrive. Studies show that people who adopt sustained weight loss and better glucose control not only have fewer AFib episodes, but respond better to procedures like ablation if they need them. Let me give you a dramatic visual. Imagine two patients. The first weighs 250 pounds, has sleep apnea, prediabetes, and high blood pressure. He's told his AFib is just genetic. He gets an ablation, but within a year, it comes back. The second patient also has AFib, but instead of just relying on procedures, she changes her diet, loses 30 pounds, reverses her prediabetes, and fixes her sleep apnea. Her ablation, it sticks. And in some cases, she may not even need one. That's the power of addressing AFib from a metabolic lens. Now let's dig a little deeper into mechanisms because you know I like to explain why. Inflammation. Chronic inflammation leads to fibrosis and scar tissue in the atria. Scar tissue disrupts normal electrical conduction, making AFib more likely. 
insulin resistance. High insulin increases sympathetic nervous system tone. That makes the heart more electrically unstable. Obesity and fatty infiltration. Fat cells can literally infiltrate heart muscle tissue, disrupting its electrical properties. Mitochondrial dysfunction. The energy factories of heart cells run less efficiently in insulin resistance, meaning the atria tire more easily and misfire. Here's another dramatic fact. Did you know that AFib is now being diagnosed in people as young as their 30s and 40s? It's no longer just a disease of the elderly. And the rise parallels the obesity and diabetes epidemics. That's not a coincidence. So what can you do if you've been diagnosed? Or if you're worried you might be at risk? Number one, lower your carbohydrate intake. This reduces insulin and helps you lose visceral fat. Number two, prioritize sleep. AFib and sleep apnea are close cousins. If you snore or stop breathing at night, get tested. Number three, move your body daily. Not chronic cardio, but regular walking, strength training, and activities that reduce visceral fat. Number four, manage stress. High cortisol drives blood sugar up and keeps you inflamed. Number five, check your labs. Not just your total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol, but instead focus on your triglyceride to HDL cholesterol ratios, fasting insulin, hemoglobin A1C, and your waist circumference. And here's the hopeful part, it's not too late. Studies show that even people who've had AFib for years can reduce recurrence with metabolic interventions. Every pound of visceral fat you lose lowers the burden on your atria. Every night of good sleep reduces your adrenaline surge. Every carb you cut lowers your insulin. Small steps compound into big wins. Now circling back, where do doctors learn this? Where do patients go when their own doctors don't have the training? This is where the nutrition network comes in. Their new course on cardiovascular health is designed exactly for this purpose and to give patients hope that there is more to heart health than just prescriptions. So rather you're a doctor looking for continuing education or a patient who wants to understand how to heal your heart, Check the link below. The Nutrition Network has been my trusted partner in this journey, and I'm honored to share their work with you. Because at the end of the day, AFib isn't just about a fluttering heart. It's about the metabolic storm beneath it. And if you calm that storm through low carb, through metabolic healing, you can bring rhythm back, not just to your heart, but to your life itself. I'll see you in the next video.